Hi, I'm Councillor Chris Botton. I lead the Liberal Democrat group at Tandridge District Council and Surrey County Council and I'm here to talk to you about Tandridge's local plan. Last time I spoke to you was about a year ago and in that I set out my plans and hopes, some of my lines in the sand and some of the things that I'd be insisting upon that would need to be included in the local plan if it was to be fit for purpose. The outcome needs to be judged as it is. It needs to be judged for what it actually says, not what was intended. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the local plan as published for consultation, and the consultation ends at the end of September, how the local plan sets out what the objectives for our district are in terms of housing and how they have differed from the intentions and the hopes that I had expressed a year ago. And I'll use one statistic which I think might be illustrative. The statistic hinges on the number of affordable homes that communities will support. And you will recall that the rationale for the garden village in the south of the district, which when I spoke to you a year ago, the site was unknown. The rationale was to ensure that there were more, more affordable housing for our residents and their families so that our children could actually afford to live in the same district as we are privileged to do. So for me and for many, the touchstone for the effectiveness of the local plan address is, is, is addressing the issue of affordable housing. Now if I tell you that in my ward alone, that's Portley Ward in Cater on the Hill, in my ward alone the number of houses to be built in the local plan period is 75 on a Greenbelt conservation area site and 60 on another site that was released from the green belt and of those two numbers 40% have to be affordable. If I tell you how many affordable homes they'll be built in Oxted where the council is based and where the council administration is based it's zero. Number of affordable homes in Oxted zero. Now Many of us in Catrum and Warningham over the years have been resentful of the fact that the administration in, Cat in Oxted has continued to develop in the north of the district and the vast bulk of the development of housing over the last 20 years has been up here. We are therefore quite shocked that nothing appears to be built of an affordable nature in Oxted. There's one site, the gas holder site, which is due to produce flats, but we're told that because of the cost of the decontamination of the land, the prospect of asking the developer to produce affordable homes on that development is zero. So if the intention of the local plan is to produce a greater number of affordable homes, it seems quite symbolic that the number produced in Oxted is, uh, is, is none. I did secure one concession from the administration and that concession could be very important but it's hinged on another failure of the plan. Over the plan period between now and 2032-33 the number of homes to be built in the proposed garden village in South Godston is 1400-1400 which is pathetically small and that's because the developer has said that he won't be able to sell more than that number in the planned period which does imply he's probably trying to sell them at too high a price but that's a separate comment so the concession I secured was that that number would be supplemented by a thousand council homes or homes where the council had nomination rights for families and that those, those would be built by the council. Now I regard that as a significant concession and I'm very pleased that that was conceded. 
but at the same time I can't accept that Caterham and Wallingham are taking the level of development that they are because it seems a unjust and b unfair on the populations of our towns. The development of the Caterham Master Plan with 90 or so flats on the church walk site. The development of what's called one public estate which means looking at the publicly owned land in the area and seeing what can be developed on it so that includes the site of Caterham Dean, it includes the site of the community recycling centre, the TIP, it includes the site of the Douglas Brunton Centre and it includes again in my ward in, Fo in Foxen Lane the former Dormers Surrey County Council care home. And if you add all those sites together and believe me they're going to build on the Douglas Brunton Centre site so you're going to have to face up to the changes in service that will be provisioned there for older people. If you add all those up you get another 180 or so potential dwellings in addition to what's already slated for the sites that I've mentioned. And it seems to me particularly ironic that one of the sites in Caterham, one in my ward again, is in the green belt and is in a conservation area, the Kenley, Cons Kenley Aerodrome Conservation Area. So intent are the council on developing in Caterham, so intent are they in developing in Wallingham, that they have even looked at green belt sites in a conservation area to get the numbers up. I regard that as a betrayal a betrayal of our goodwill in trying to secure the objectives of the local plan and a betrayal of our residents. So when I look back along the whole process in which I've been involved, who do I blame for that situation? Who, who's responsible for this injustice? Well, to a certain extent, I have to blame myself because I should have opposed the Caterham Master Plan more vociferously. I should have set it out as a line in the sand. But principally, I blame the fact that the administration has failed to heed the voices from the north of the district. And I mention this particularly in respect of infrastructure. As I sit here recording this, it's the day after another torrential thunderstorm in Caterham on the Hill. And I know that over a hundred families sit tremulously in fear when thunder and heavy, very heavy rain fall because of the floods in uh, June 2016. And one of the points that we continue to make about what the local plan needs to do is to secure infrastructure that has been severely lacking in Caterham and part of that infrastructure has to address the flood risk that many of our residents face. And I can honestly tell you that none of the schemes in Caterham addresses the issue of flood attenuation. None. The two sites in my ward, for instance, the in proposed infrastructure set out in the, in the, in the local plan are pedestrian crossings and multi-use games areas, pathetic stuff, all of which is useful, but none of which addresses what the residents' concerns are, which is the availability of an appointment for a doctor, uh, public transport, flooding, potholes, all the other things that I don't need to list because everybody's got them on the tips of their tongue. This failure to address the infrastructure needs of our district, this failure to provide the right level of civic leadership to secure that infrastructure, and this failure to put the capital behind it seems to me to be a legacy which our children and our children's children will look back on and regret angrily. So I'm asking you to respond to the local plan, I'm asking you to respond to the consultation and I'm asking you to make the sorts of points that you would have made to me. 
I've had some outstanding contributions to the consultation copied to me from my residents who are all intelligent, thoughtful and deeply caring for their district and for their locality. It's not too late, we can fight back and the inspector will read and understand hopefully the consultation responses that are received. But there needs to be something radical to change. If a district council can impose hundreds of affordable homes away from where it's based and where its councillors are based and none in its own town, we have to ask about the value base on which it's operating. And that's my message. Thank you.